Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. And if you're new here, welcome to the Photography 101 series, the series where I view your photography and give uh, back some criticism, uh, you know, tips, tricks, uh, things you can do within Lightroom or Photoshop to really improve your editing skills and um, also, you know, give you some tips on uh, composition when you're actually out shooting uh, on location, wherever you are, whether it's a person, whether it's, uh, you know, a lake, doesn't matter where, just some general rules of photography to help you all around. So I hope this helps your process a little bit. If you are new, if you do like this series, uh, I recommend you go uh, check out the other ones if you haven't seen those and uh, subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome. So I know these these videos don't get a lot of views, but it's probably the thing that I enjoy doing the most because I'm so passionate about photography. So if you, if you are here and you're uh, spending the time with me today watching this and the previous ones, I really appreciate it. Okay, let's get into it. We're going to take a look at uh, one, two, three, four, five, six people six people's uh, photographs. So if you want to contribute to the series, maybe you want me to view some of your photography and critique it, uh, you can email me at productions at post and I will, uh, I'll pick the best photos or I'll pick the, you know, five or 10 photos or whatever. Don't send me like 45 photos. Try and pick like five to send me. And I will say that uh, there are probably 45 different people to go through here. I'm, I'm only doing a couple in this, in this video. So there's kind of a backlog of, of photographers to kind of go through. So I do apologize if you are a person who submitted and you are not in this video. Um, I'm really sorry that you have to wait even longer for the next video, but that'll be coming next week. So anyways, let's get into this. The first person that we're going to take a look at is, or the first person's photos is uh, Brian. So you've got six photos here and uh, some awesome landscape ones. So the first one, this is pretty cool. Obviously, sunset. Uh, I don't. I would assume that this is not sunrise. There's a lot of people around and stuff. <laughs> Usually, there's not that many people awake for sunrise, so we'll assume that this is sunset. Uh, I, the sun is fine in the middle, but it's the the horizon is also basically in the middle. So we either want to lose some of the sky or lose some of the bottom. Um, but I'm fine with the sun being in the middle. It adds a bit of symmetry. So I find the people on the bottom right. Uh, I want to know more about them, but I can't see them enough to really get their stories. So I just kind of want to lose them. Also, the boat on the right hand side is cut off. So from a composition standpoint, I might even maybe take that out a little bit. And that might place our sun on a third. So if you move this kind of up, you just take those people out as well. Uh, you could put your horizon on a on the line a third there, but I kind of want to bring down the sky as well maybe a little bit maybe just kind of move it up a little a little now the guy on the left i kind of want to leave in there because we could kind of silhouette him out if we really kind of bring down the shadows he's kind of hidden now we still get detail in the places that we want uh like this boat over here with the american flag which is pretty cool there's still detail there there's detail in the water and in the highlights and there's detail in the sky so when you're composing your photo even before you take the shot like if you're out unseen and you're you want to get things right in camera instead of you know cropping uh, afterwards and stuff you think about think about the distracting elements on the outside and try and remove those even before you take a photo so have patience and spend a lot of time maneuvering or getting to where you need to go so from a post-production standpoint or editing editing standpoint to make this even more interesting i might add just a little bit more contrast now this is a jpeg so there's some degradation going on here might make it a little bit brighter and then uh, deepen down the sky. I'm going to use a gradient linear filter. I'm going to reset these and we're going to add some contrast, maybe bring down the exposure a little bit. And it's going to click and drag down. Hold the shift button to make it straight. And I want it to be very, very gradual. So I'm thinking maybe like we're there. And I'm going to bring it down. I don't want it to cover the sun uh, completely, but maybe just touch the sun. And then we can kind of play with our sliders and see see what happens so you see how they just add just some, just some more life into the clouds into the sky it's dark on the bottom now it's a bit dark on the top and it just makes the eye naturally go to the middle where the sun is so um, small little changes here we remove some distracting elements uh, we added a little bit more drama into the photo the color balance isn't perfect here but it's a jpeg and it's just too much of a pain in the butt to, to, to fix right now so uh, but uh, awesome awesome shot a lovely nice half silhouette shot here at sunset so well done the next one this is cool this is really cool this looks maybe like oh god this could be Spain or Portugal this could be the Caribbean who knows it looks kind of European though so 
that would be my guess. And I'm sure you did tell me in the email where this was, but again, so many emails have come in, I kind of forget. So I j just, number one, straightened it out so the horizon was straight. So that's number one. That's the first thing, like, you know, when you get in your car and you drive to work, you drive wherever you're going, first thing you do is turn on or turn the vehicle on, put the key and turn it on. The first thing I do when I'm editing landscape photos is fix the horizon. Like every single time, so basically the first thing I do is make sure that the horizon is straight. So, uh, and sometimes it's not even noticeable, you know, the, you can't even see the horizon. So it's, you know, it's a little difficult. So it's not, I guess, technically always the first thing I do, but in situations like this, when I notice that it's not straight, right away, I definitely fix it. And I've also decided to, oh, I've also decided to put the horizon on a on a line of third, which is uh, ideal. So just that little change right there makes a big difference in this photo, in my opinion. Uh, from a colors perspective, we're pretty close to, to real life, I guess you could. So I add a little bit more contrast, just a little bit more brightness. I could pump up the saturation here, and I find that's a very typical mistake that a lot of people make. They just go, they just go crazy on saturation. And that's not realistic. Like there's, it's okay to exaggerate. It's okay to saturate things more than they are in real life, but nothing is this saturated in real life. This is totally overdone. So don't get too saturation heavy. Do your best to, you know, because this is, this is kind of where it was, where it was taken. If we just pump it just a little bit, you just want like, cause that looks, that looks natural. That looks believable. It looks like it could actually look like that. So just try, try and stay in the range of believable uh, saturation. Uh, I might add just a little bit more contrast. The sky is a little hazy and that's okay. It's obviously, a, it's, it's a warm day here and uh, there's a lot of humidity in the air. So you're gonna get that kind of haze. So we wanna kind of fix that the best we can. We're gonna use another linear gradient filter at the top, bring that down and just add some uh, a real healthy dose of contrast, maybe bring down the exposure a little bit. So we're getting some color issues here. We can try and fix the sky's a little bit purple. So we could try and fix that with the color balance slider, try and bring it back to normal. But again, it's a JPEG, so there's some degradation uh, issues there. But it's, it, this photo tells a, a pretty interesting story. Number one, there is good, great composition here because of the way that the bay comes in. That all comes in kind of on a third. There's leading lines that kind of loop around. You could come in from the left with your eye and look at the people and follow the trail down into the, the buildings in the city or the town or whatever. Uh, there's, there's interesting elements all over the place in this, in this photo. You could say that the photo is a little bit busy because of all the trees or the streets and, and trees around the streets and the buildings. Um, but it's so congested that I think your eye doesn't go go there first. It's not that kind of distracting. There are more interesting elements in here where your eye goes first, like the people on that trail, like the that uh, almost this place almost looks volcanic or something. But you know that that piece of land that jetties out to the right there, which is pretty cool. So uh, this is a this is a very nice photo. Next up, we have uh, this must be Hawaii or something because that looks very Jurassic Park. <laughs> so this is nice as well. So we have a foreground element here, which is these, whatever you call, I don't know what we call those things. Um, so they're a little bit out of focus, which is great. And then you have the sky, which is perfectly exposed. I love that. That looks like a, maybe a bird or a mosquito or something up there. And some decent light in the middle. And I think this really, it doesn't need a lot. There's, this is very well, this is very well done. I might bring this up a bit on the bottom though. It might be a little bit too much information there. I don't want it to be overwhelming. I just want it to be subtle. So I don't know, maybe something like that. Add some contrast, add some shadow, or bring up the shadows. See how that just kind of changes a little bit. We're gonna bring down the highlights. We don't want to get like crazy HDR here. And then we're gonna add some contrast back in just so we can see a little bit more of what's going on in the middle. Maybe add some saturation, not too much though. And it feels a little bit cold or cool. And this is midday or late morning. So you wanna add some more heat back in there just by warming up the photo a little bit. And we'll just use that with our, color, our temperature slider. So we bring that back in. This looks more realistic of what it probably looked like on that day. Now we, I see some yellow and some orange into the clouds, which maybe isn't that realistic. So we can fix that again with the linear gradient filter, which is 
one of my favorite tools. We'll drag it down. We'll add some contrast because we really want to add some life into the into those uh, clouds. We'll kind of bring it down like this, and then we're just gonna back off on the temperature slider and kind of like reset it. Maybe come even down into the cool, make it a little bit more cool. Something like that. So just uh, some subtle changes here. There's a couple other things that I could do, but if I do it before and after. See how it was almost like faded? It just kind of lacked a little bit of life. And then you just kind of, you know, you just, just that little bit of punch in a couple of areas and it really kind of changes the photo. So um, let's move on. Uh, yeah, sorry, I just noticed two that are very similar here. So I'm just gonna pick one. Let's pick, uh, let's pick this one. So first thing, I'm going for the crop tool. Or the, yeah, the crop tool. So I'm gonna straighten that horizon. First thing I'm gonna do, and now I, I want that horizon to be on a line of third, whether it's the top one or the bottom one, we could put it on the top one like this and leave some interest in the beach, or we could bring it back up and make it on the, the bottom one. I think I prefer to see it this way because the sky is really interesting and dynamic and the beach is just, and there's it's a little seaweedy, there's a bunch of footprints, it doesn't even really, look like a beach has just been, it looks used or something. It's not really that attractive. So let's lose that part and we'll come up something like that. It doesn't need to be perfectly on the line of third, but it just has to be in the, the general area. And you'll notice that I intentionally cropped out the guy on the left here as well, because uh, he was kind of half there. So we'll go with this shot. And I think he just automatically, uh, that's really made this photo almost perfect just by you know straightening the horizon, removing some of the uh, elements and we're left with a really nice shot like I, do, I didn't really do anything here it was a, a lovely shot taken um, from the beginning I'm just adding a little bit of contrast just want to really uh, highlight those those uh, silhouetted rocks there down at the beach maybe add a little bit more contrast um just want to add some more brightness i love the way that the light is interacting with these trees in the distance uh they're silhouetted there's people out here on, in the water it's really cool now we're getting a lot of noise a lot of uh, JPEG compression degradation. So we can come in here and use noise reduction, although see how they just kind of like removed it. It's not really there anymore. Just kind of softens it out. You could do this on this photo. It actually worked way better than I thought it was going to. But for a JPEG, I would recommend not using heavy doses of the luminance noise reduction tool. It, use it very sparingly because you, when you do it, you're losing detail. So watch these trees and they almost look painted. So if I remove the noise reduction, you see how some of their detail comes back? So this looks fine to me. I don't think this needs really any noise reduction, but the sky up here does. So, you know, you don't want to go too crazy on it, but you want to do it enough where it helps the rest of your photo. So that's probably a good balance right there. And we'll just do a before and after. Just, I didn't really do much. I just added a bit of contrast. And the last photo is uh, very interestingly framed. I, I like when people do this. Uh, I would, just for symmetry's sake, I might bring it up just a little bit like this. Mm, I'm generally not a fan of square orientation shots like this. It's very Instagram, which is fine, but I prefer, you know, six by four, four by three, or 16 by nine, whatever ratio you want to do, just not four by four or square, so. Uh, but this is not not bad by any means and I it makes sense for this style of photo Now we have two options here as far as editing goes We have some detail in the foliage around in the trees So we could bring that to life by bringing up the shadows and getting some detail in there like that Or we could go the opposite way Which is make those silhouetted by bringing down the shadows kind of like this and maybe adding some contrast um, some brightness not too much. I want to bring down the highlights because I want I want that sky to kind of come back a little bit and I'm just going to increase the brightness of the whole image. So we could go this way and make the photograph of the story really about what's in the distance or we could bring the shadows back up and it kind of tells the story of, of the whole surrounding area. I personally prefer the silhouetted version uh, because when it's like this, I know that's a tree I know that that's a tree. I know that these are bushes and, and foliage and flowers and, and whatnot. I don't really need to see all the detail in there. My mind just automatically knows 
what that stuff is subconsciously. So I prefer the silhouetted version, but there, I don't think there's anything wrong with you know pumping that up a little bit. But you have to watch for certain things that take place when you do that, like chromatic aberration. We spoke about that before in the previous video. And if you don't know what chromatic, chromatic aberration is, it's basically the way that the lens elements interact with the light and it changes the, it's, it's complicated. The, the simple version is it creates color fringing around uh, edges uh, of high contrast. So you can see there's some purple and blue fringing along here and it's super easy to get rid of. You just kind of scroll down a Lightroom to your lens correction uh, tab within the right hand menu system and then literally just click remove chromatic aberration. So I'm gonna click this and you guys watch the, the fringing here on the left tree. Yeah, that's not actually doing much. So I'm gonna zoom in more and show you where it's doing the most. So right along here, uh, the purple, see how that just kind of removes it just a little bit. So this is um, number one base, oh, sorry. Number one, because it's a, a JPEG. So we're losing, we're trying to create data out of nothing for the most part. It's not like a raw file, which has different, there's so much different layers of, of information that you can kind of pull. Um, it's, it's, yeah, there's, I mean, there's different ways to go about fixing this. The problem with it, sometimes it's green, sometimes it's purple and blue like this. You can use your color sliders here to bring down those specific colors like this. So I've kind of removed all the purple from there, but then you have to think about the other areas of the photo, which may have some purple in it or some magenta. So that's a risky thing to do. And also there's some blues in here too. So if I, if I want to remove the blues from that tree, the fringing, look what I've done to my photo. I've removed all the blue from the sky. So there's different ways about going about doing that. For me, if I was doing a quick edit, I would just come in here and just do the purple slider to come down like maybe a little bit of magenta because there's not really that much uh, magenta or purple in the rest of the photo. So I think that's probably fine. But like I said before, I would probably go with the silhouetted version just because I like, I like the, it adds a little bit more framing. It tells a story in the distance. Okay. So let's move on to the next person. Uh, well done, Brian. Very nice photos. Uh, Dan, Dan sent in seven photos. So I remember looking through these photos when they first came in and uh, I think it's a really good example of someone with a different editing style than, than myself. I'm usually not a, a, a kind of a grungy photographer or uh, anything like this. I, I, I totally respect it. I just, I almost can't relate to it in, in a way. So I'll treat, kind of treat these photos just from a photography rules perspective and not really an editing perspective. So in this photo, it, there is a lot of interesting elements in here. Abandoned houses are cool, but this is taking from a human perspective, which is fine, but I would say maybe consider changing your viewpoint a little bit. I would say maybe get down uh, low, not totally on the ground, but low, maybe on your knees and get square with the wall and make sure that it's, you're flat with the wall. Like you don't want to kind of shoot at an angle and from a, from a, a human perspective standing up, that's, this is the view that anyone in the room would see. Add a little bit more personality to it. Get down low and uh, get flat with the wall. Uh, this one's pretty cool. I, I like this one. Uh, I love the, you can really tell which way the wind blows here uh, from left to right, which is, which is awesome. So abandoned house, we could add some, a little bit more detail, I think would, would be cool. Maybe bring down the highlights a little bit. Again, we don't want to get crazy HDR here, but uh, add some color, add some warmth and maybe a gradient filter at the top, kind of darkening down the sky a little bit. The color bounces off here, but my, the point of that was I kind of want to see some of that grungy detail in the house where before, if I do it before and after, I almost, I almost lost it a little bit. So, uh, that might, the, what I did might be a little bit too stylized. So I might bring that back down, but I just, I want to see more of, of kind of that detail in the house. Uh, but pretty cool shot. I might even bring this down, something like, something like that. Uh, the next, next up. So this one to me, uh, doesn't really do much because there's things being cut off. And I, I don't mean that sound offensive or rude. I'm not trying to be <laughs> offensive or rude. I'm 
purposely trying to be overly critical. I think that's kind of the point of this series. So because there's kind of something cut off, like I, I want to read that in loving memory of Albert Collin, born 1984, died in 1937. So uh, I know what all that says, but I kind of want to see more of it. Like I, I, I almost don't like that it's cut off. And it's neat that they're all in a different angle and stuff and they're, you know, things are kind of decaying and falling down. But uh, I, I would almost maybe, because it is a bit out of focus because your focus is over here, it's, it's almost... It's too in focus. It's out of focus, but it's <laughs> it's too in focus. If you're going to use depth of field like that, just blow it completely out of focus so uh, my mind isn't wandering. I want to read that sign, and I want to read that sign, but that one over there is more in focus, but I can still read the one on the right, so there's just conflicting elements, I think, in, in the photo. So And that comes down to uh, lens. Maybe you can't, maybe you don't have the depth of field in the, in the equipment that you have, so um, maybe it's not your fault. So... The far left one here, this is this is cool. And I like that it's black and white. This is very eerie, kind of creepy. And my favorite part of the photo actually is way back here. You see the cross. Um, you can barely see it because the cross is black, but you just see the outline of of the body on, on the on the cross there. So that's the really spooky part for me, and I, I like that. So uh, very eerie photo. Next, so kind of like the first photo, I would say maybe shoot from a different perspective. To me, this looks like you're just standing there, kind of looking down at it. I might, I might say, shoot either shoot high, like get square to it, and shoot like way above, and hold your camera like kind of down over top, or shoot low, or maybe get close up to um, that cross on, on the left or something. That just kind of looks like what you would, the exact same thing you would see as you were looking down. So uh, this next one. So this I really really like this one. Um, I think this is actually fantastic. It looks like something out of a movie. I, I like how it's edited. That this isn't this isn't typically how I would edit it with this. It's almost like it looks like it's split toned or something. Um, so I really appreciate when other people can do it and do it well because it's, it is something that I struggle with. I'm and I can't really grasp uh, split toning that that well. So your horizons maybe just a little bit crooked based on the house. So actually, I might do something like that. Um, and the tree, I would say just maybe avoid cropping off the tree, whether it's in post-production or whether it's in, uh, whether you're there in person. So I might say, you know, take a step to the left a little bit, get that tree in. And, uh, I think that, I think that would be awesome. This is a very cool grungy photo. I really, I really like that a lot. Uh, next one. So another kind of grungy photo, an old car. And th to me, this has just a little bit too much saturation. See the blue back here in this building? It's not actually blue there. So we want to basically remove that. But when we do that, now we're fighting with the sky because we lost color in the sky. So it, it's hard for me to kind of edit this since it's a JPEG and it's already been uh, so heavily edited. So I can't really do much as far as fix the color. I could desaturate it a little bit. But uh, I mean, we can make this black and white as well if we want. But I think the, the right decision was made here to leave it in color because the the hood is a different color than the rest of the car and, and uh, even the doors, the paint's coming off and stuff. So this is a really cool grungy photo, but uh, maybe again, try getting down or at a, at a different angle. Uh, this one's kind of the same criticism as, as the previous one. Too much saturation for me personally. The ground here is purple. That's not actually purple in real life. There's purple over here. Uh, there's heavy, heavy blue saturation in these mountains in the background. There'll be some, but not that much. So I would just bring back the saturation a little bit. Um, just make it a little bit more realistic. And that, that's my personal opinion. You can totally disagree. People have their own editing styles. So nothing wrong with this. Just not, uh, not for me, uh, color wise. Next up was someone called, give me a shout out. <laughs> You said give me a shout out, but you didn't actually tell me your name. So that's what I'm going to call you. Give me, give me a shout out. You've included one photo. And it's a pretty cool sunset. I love the gradient here. The the orange into almost like a pink into a purple. And they got some blues in there. That's awesome. I really like that. Looks like a parking lot. Uh, I don't know what store that is. But let's, let's lose uh, a distracting element for me. And that is the vehicle over here. If we just go boom, we can keep that, stripe, that street light in there maybe. And just... Um, maybe bring down the sky a little bit, something like this, and not something like that. I mean, it's it's a it's a really well shot uh, from the beginning. I love that the sky is absolutely beautiful. So cool. 
Uh, next up is Leafs uh, Tav 91. I assume that's for Tavares. I uh, included one photo, no name. So again, I'd, if you're going to email me your photo, let me know your name. Uh, so we're in the foresty area here. And there's a lot going on. From a photography perspective, there's too much going on. It's quite distracting. I don't, I don't even know where to look first. There's a log down here. There's a fallen a branch. There's a kind of a skinny tree here. Uh, there's leaves everywhere. Uh, the, from a color pr perspective, it's pretty awesome. There's greens up here. There's yellows. There's blue in the sky. But visually, it's, it's really, really busy. So to me, this is more of just like a snapshot. So I, I don't, from a photography perspective, I don't know if I could do much from here. It would be cool, uh, like a phone background. Sometimes you see like a pattern style phone background or something. So I could see this kind of being a phone background. I, I, I kind of want to see details though. Get up close to a leaf and show me the detail of a leaf and maybe blow the background or, or something like that. Uh, next up is Leah, and Leah is included, or Leah or Leah, I apologize if, I, apologize if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, eight photos, and I think my camera's about to die, so let me just change the battery and I will continue. All right, battery reset, or camera reset, let's, let's do it. So, picture number one, oh snap, a double rainbow, almost a triple rainbow. Let's, let's see what we can do here. So, Again, kind of distracting elements this is one of the first things I look for. This big piece of roof, I assume, or, or whatever that is, a house. Uh, to me, that personally has to go, so I would just kind of crop that out. And then we're left with a really interesting photo. Uh, we're not kind of distracted by any other elements. We see the rainbow. It looks awesome. The colors look great. I uh, probably wouldn't change too much. Maybe add some contrast in there. Maybe a little bit of... Sh bring up the shadows a little bit. Bring down the highlights. Uh, you could add some more contrast and or some uh, saturation in there. Uh, pretty pretty nice photo. It's it's framed nicely with the elements having balance on both sides, where the tree is almost the same shape as the house on the right. So, I think just removing that that uh, ro roof um, from the house uh, before the crop was probably the only thing that really needed to be done. The next one is is pretty cool. This looks very European. So maybe some contrast in there. It was looking a little bit flat. Uh, the sky's kind of blown out. So see if we can retrieve some of it with some, bring down the highlights. Maybe we'll add some saturation in there, but not too much. We don't want it to go too crazy. Add some brightness back in. And what I might do is darken down the sky a little bit. So we're going to use the gradient filter again. Kind of come down. Uh, maybe some contrast we've got it. we don't want to use too much something like that and maybe we'll even do the the lake a little bit here but not as much and uh, something like that and it feels a little cool so might warm it up some and maybe even bring you could bring it in like this maybe something like that that's a that's kind of a nice photo you'd, you'd hang on a wall or something so well done the next one this looks like whew, this looks very jungly um, that's a very muddy river or waterway so the, the reflections cool I, I I almost get lost a little bit it's, it's got really good leading lines like that comes in down at the bottom here and it kind of comes up and around the left and then back towards another third of the photo which is really good so the leading lines in this photo are great but I think the most interesting thing for me is this kind of reflection here. I'm not going to do this crop and keep it, but I just like the balance of this here where you have the tree above in, in real life and then the reflection of the tree in the water. To me, that is the most interesting element, but uh, awesome leading lines here. Next, ooh, that is a beautiful countryside. So we're, we need some contrast in here. It's, it's very almost flat. Are those sheep? Yeah, it must be sheep or cows or something. That's cool. So... I'm going to add some contrast in, and that's going to darken down that a uh, little bit too much. So we're going to increase the brightness to like there maybe. And don't worry, we're going to bring back the sky. We can do that by bringing down the highlights a little bit, which we'll do. And maybe we'll do the same thing. And we'll, I think this is going to look pretty cool once we get this done. Bring that down, add some contrast. Maybe bring it way down, kind of like this. We might have gone a little bit too far. 
And I'm going to actually ang angle it up a, a bit like this. Because I don't want that mountain on the, or the hill way off to the left to get too, too dark. And we can fix that a little bit later as well. But we're in, I think something like that maybe. And then we're going to go back in, increase the, the brightness a little bit. And the rock that's down here to the left, that's out of focus, but it almost, it's not really out of focus. It's almost blurry or something like it's like you move the camera or something maybe. Um, so I kind of want to, I just want to lose that and maybe we'll come up like something like this and we could add some, add some vibrance in there. Maybe a little bit of clarity. That's dangerous though. So we got some noise up here. We could come down and use the uh, noise reduction tool, soften it up a bit. Um, but it's it's added way too much noise reduction in the actual middle here. So uh, something like that. Just so we took that, we did this. The sky looks way better in my opinion. Added some contrast back into the land and just kind of given the, the the photo some life with uh, that extra pop of color. Next, this oh this is cool. This uh, oh yeah, that's neat. All right, so it feels a bit overexposed. So it is going to need some some contrast here. This one might be tough to uh, might be tough to fix. Add some color, maybe. It's a little cool, so we'll warm it up a bit. Uh, the sky isn't really that interesting, so maybe we'll bring it down. And I kind of want to lose actually all of this because I'm thinking about the road down below and how it kind of comes through a third on the left, follows the bottom line of third loops around and then back up almost towards the uh, top corner of the top third. So maybe something, something like this. I don't know. I might change my mind a couple times. I don't know. This is kind of the, this is the fun of it. This is the point where you, you know, you just play around with crops and different, different things. But I think this is a little bit too over, overexposed as a JPEG for me to kind of recover it. But uh, again, awesome leading lines in this photo. Aha, that's cool. You can see right down at the water, your horizon, I think it's perfectly straight. Well, it's not perfect, but it's close. And there's not really much interesting stuff in the sky. So we'll kind of remove that. That brings our horizon closer to a third. Uh, I really want to see the detail in these rocks down here. So we might do a little trick. I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll go back to the gra linear gradient tool. We'll reset the tools and we're going to bump up the clarity big time and we're going to come click and drag from the bottom uh, something like that and that might just give us a, just a little bit more clarity on the rocks uh, kind of not really we'll add some contrast in there too just to make them a little bit more visible and the whole photo itself seems a little bit cool so we'll kind of warm it up a little bit it almost feels purple too so we'll maybe bring some green in there your trees over here are out of focus so i think maybe you were moving or something when you took this photo so watch your shutter speed and then we'll bring some we'll go back to the linear gradient filter uh reset everything bring the exposure down bring the contrast up and we're just going to fix that sky again just kind of add some add some life to that sky angle it a little bit something like that maybe some contrast Exposure down, something like this. It's a little cool, so we're gonna make it warm by adding some color back into it. Just a little bit though, not too much. And we'll get out of this, and we're gonna crop that distracting little tree off to the left. Something like that, maybe. We've got some yellow in the clouds, which isn't uh, real. And I see you've got a lens, we got lens dust up here which we might be it might be able to remove with the what's it called spot removal tool so we just we make it bigger or smaller with the uh mouse wheel and i don't even know if this shows up on this recorder that i'm using so if you don't see a circle i apologize it's a, it's a big circle click on that and it's going to give us another area where we can kind of take a sample from so we can do that and boom your lens dust or your sensor dust is is uh removed for the most part i can still kind of see it but so if you go to before and after, so I can already tell that I got the color balance wrong, so I could fix that, but add a little bit more life into the sky, add a little bit more visibility into the water. Um, yeah, next up, fireworks. Uh, not a lot of criticism here. I struggled with fireworks as well. 
So in, fireworks by themselves in a the sky is just always going to be fireworks. If you're going to shoot fireworks, something I've learned is add an element, whether that's a building, whether that's a person, you know, if you're watching with some friends, take a step back, get behind your friends, kneel down and shoot above their shoulder, get their head silhouetted or get their shoulder silhouetted, maybe out of focus. It adds some perspective to the shot. It gives a bit of depth and um, it just, it gives a reason kind of behind the photo. Fireworks in the sky don't really tell a story. They're just kind of fireworks. So try and add an element if you can. Could be a building, could be a person, could be a tree, could be whatever, skyline, whatever. So um, not a lot of criticism here. It's very difficult to shoot uh, fireworks. Uh, especially handheld and this was handheld I can tell because of all the when you take a you take a picture at night your camera wants to hold hold the shutter open for as long as it can and while it's open say it's open for I don't know a second and a half for that second and a half we'll say we'll say my iPad is is the camera try and hold your iPad as, as still as you can for a minute and a half. And even as still as you can, it's still gonna shake a little bit. It's just, it's inevitable. So uh, always shoot fireworks on a tripod if you can. Last photo. Oh, we're super zoomed in here. Ah, nice. So this looks very European. Uh, I don't know where this is, but that's cool. So it's difficult to take photos of streets because of signs. It's, you don't want to leave half of a sign in there because it it is distracting and it doesn't it tells a story with no ending. I don't know how the sign ends and it is my eye just goes to it and I want to know. So I I would just remove that all the letters off something like this, and I really want to keep basically all the other elements in it. This guy, he's well, he looks very suspicious here. He's checking you out. He's uh, thinking. What's she taking a photo of? Maybe she's suspicious. So uh, we'll leave him in there. He's fine. Uh, maybe some contrast. Uh, kind of want to see some detail in here. So let's see if we can bring back the highlights. Bring them down a little bit. Uh, add some color. Uh, see that I get a, like a blue tinge up in here. There's some chromatic aberration for you. Let's see if we can remove it. No, I really didn't do anything, did it? <laughs> it does work, I promise. So let's just bring back the purples. I don't think there was much purple uh, elsewhere in this photo. So let's bring back some blues as well. See what kind of a difference that makes. So we lose the sky a little bit. We lose the reflection in the window of the sky, but I think that's okay. It's, we leave it like this and it's very hazy up here. It's very, it lacks contrast. So we might go back to the linear gradi gradient filter, filter again and just reset it, add some contrast, kind of bring it down like this bring the exposure down, but really pump up that contrast, uh, something like this. So that kind of matches the contrast and look of the rest of the photo. If we do it before and after, just some subtle changes. I, I brought some more detail back in the buildings down below in that little tunnel area and added some more contrast all around, specifically the, the top there. So um, very well done, awesome photos. Let's move on to the last person. It's gonna be Oliver. And we've got six photos here and uh, some, some awesome ones too. I remember when these came in. So street photography architecture is definitely a genre that I'm interested in. I really like to see stuff like this, uh, and especially when it's done in a un unique way like this. So we're seeing a building, but we're not just seeing a building, we're seeing the reflection of the building, which is very abstract, it's very cool. Uh, I might see that little element up here on the top right. I might just kind of remove that just a little bit. I want that to be kind of just only sky where there's sky. Awesome lines in here. Love that it's in black and white. Really wouldn't change anything other than that. Just a very nice abstract photo. I mean, you could argue that you could kind of bring this up and lose the bottom here, just so it's more uniform, but a really cool reflection shot. Next up, this is an awesome photo. Uh, like this is, I could totally see this as, a, as a, a background on a phone or something. This looks very stock photo, which is, which is awesome. Obviously it's some kind of art display or the side of a building or, or whatnot, but uh, black and white, I love it. I might just add a little bit more contrast in there. Uh, maybe a little bit more brightness. That's just personal preference. Uh, I felt that maybe it was a little bit dark, something like that. I really wanna see those whites pop and I wanna see those uh, darks or blacks to as black as basically they can be. We could even bring up our, bring up our whites a little bit more. 
I, I didn't do anything. I mean, I just, I basically just added a little bit more contrast and, and brightened it up a bit. And that's just personal preference. Uh, next photo. So this is actually, I think, maybe the first submission of a, of a subject. I mean, we might have had one from an angle before, but this is the first, like, straight on uh, photo. So modeling shot here. Not every, not every photographer is comfortable uh, pho photographing other people. It's, it is definitely a stressful thing to do because you're being judged by that other person, regardless if they have experience or not in photography. So uh, kudos to you for, for doing this. So we have a girl here with a, a lovely shadow or almost like silhouette on the left side of her uh, face, which is awesome. Um, I like, I like she looks like she's sitting on a stool or something, which is kind of cool. I kind of want to not see that stool though, or I, maybe this one's okay, but I find this one here is maybe a bit uh, slightly distracting. So if we just use the spot removal tool and kind of do this, I just want to see it without it. I think that's, I think I would probably do that. I uh, just remove that, just something a little subtle. Now her exposure, or her exposure, her facial expression is, is perfect here. It's very dramatic, it's very serious. This is a very dramatic and serious photo because of the way that it's lit. There is, it's, this is shot with one light source and it's, it's very artistic. It's, it's, it, her, her face is perfect as far as her expression. Uh, I love the, you know, some, when some people shoot people, models, women specifically, a big thing is removing any blemishes, pimples, scars, whatever, whatever you want. Some would argue that that's a no-no. Some would argue that that is mandatory. I don't really care. I personally prefer to see people's blemishes. Not everyone is perfect. I don't really like that stylized model look of perfect skin and whatnot. That just realistically does not exist. So uh, I like the fact that you didn't take the time to remove any moles or blemishes or pimples or anything like that, that she does have some blemishes, blemishes on her upper chest that you could have removed. The fact that you left those in there, I think that maybe makes the photo. It gives her a, more of a human perspective. So uh, kudos there. The next one is the same girl. Uh, again, left the blemishes in, which is which is great. I actually like to see that, like I said. Uh, so we have two light sources here. The main light source is off to the right, and then we've got uh, a hair light or kind of a, a secondary light off to the left. It's interesting lighting. I actually really like the lighting. I maybe would prefer her to tilt her head a bit to the main light source so we could kind of get more of that highlight on her hair and less on the side of her face. But it is it is pretty cool. Her expression, though, to me, doesn't really match the the, the drama of the photo. It's it's a lit very dramatic. It's it's almost menacing or not evil. Evil is the wrong word, but it's it it's very dramatic. Like I said, so that facial expression of almost happiness or like a smirk or something. And that little bit of a head tilt just kind of doesn't really match the emotion of the lighting. I think the 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 look in the first photo is is much better. So think about your models or your subjects' facial expression based on the lighting that you're going to use. If you're going to use dramatic lighting, make sure that you have a facial expression which matches that lighting or matches the feel. But uh, really cool model shots, uh, very well done. Uh, this next one. I I find it super distracting, to be brutally honest. I'm not really one of one for a lot of sign photography. So uh, the color balance to me is off, and there's just a little bit too much to look at. So personally, this doesn't do a lot for me. And you've got a little bit of uh, looks to be sensor dust here. See this little string thing? That's sensor dust. So we could remove that. Um, yeah, just I, this one's just not personally for me. Uh, the next one. So again, kind of a lot going on here, but it's it's interesting. It's in black and white architecture. I love the building on the right. All those lines that is very symmetrical and stuff. The whole building is 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 cool. I like the way that the light is is dancing off of it. The one on the left, I I I'm gonna lose uh, totally. So I would honestly bring it all the way in like this, maybe kind of bring this all the way down or a little bit down and. Eh, see, I don't know. I don't know if I want to. We could go. I kind of want to lose the one on the right as well. I might play around with this one a little bit. I'm not sure. The camera itself is kind of the intention or the point of the video. Maybe something like that, I guess. 
Uh, the lines are, are really cool. I love the fact that they're just kind of like super jagged. And then you have this opposite stark line that comes out of the arm of this camera and just kind of, it's, there's interesting elements to look at in this photo. So uh, I really liked going through all of your photos. Thank you guys so much for submitting them. I know this is a long video and I appreciate if you, if you watched this far, it was when I went to go film it, it was not my intent that it would be, uh, you know, close to 46 or 47 minutes or whatever we're at. So I really appreciate you sticking around and, uh, you know, having some fun. I hope you learned something and uh, I'm not always right. Everyone has a different opinion when it comes to style, when it comes to editing, when it comes to photography. There really is no right or wrong. There are guidelines that you should follow, like rules of thirds and horizon not in the center and just other things. So I hope may maybe some of those tips helped a little bit. And if you want to submit some of your photos for critiquing and for review, please email me at productions at postaposhow.com. I would love to see your photos. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Adios. Thank <laughs> you.